The beta for DaVinci Resolve 20.1 is available right now, and it is an insane update. There is so much I'm excited to show you. It is packed full of new tools and features for DaVinci Resolve. And the only thing I have to say first is that if you love incredible new tools for DaVinci Resolve, you've got to check out Proto V3. The long-awaited update to my DaVinci Resolve plugin for glow and high energy effects is available in early access right now. You get powerful new features like text outline effects, built-in tracking, and powerful source options. You get to support development and give feedback as it goes. And while there will be a free version at full release, if you choose to support the project during early access, you get 50% off of that full paid product price. More info in the description, but for now, let's get back to the very exciting DaVinci Resolve 20.1. I want to start off with something small but exciting to the right amount of people. I'm going to drag and drop this image onto my timeline and you'll think, wow, that's neat, an image, right? Well, if you open up the metadata, you'll see this is a WebP file format. This is just an image format that you didn't used to be able to use in Resolve. It's all over the internet. Now you can. For a very specific group of people, this will be very exciting. Now second is one of sort of the title features of this upgrade, but it won't be something I'll be able to really show off, and that is all this new support for immersive video editing. This is all the work Blackmagic Design has been doing around like the Apple Vision Pro and like that VR AR space. They of course have that crazy new immersive uh, Cine Ursa camera with you know like the two lenses side by side, and now in Resolve you can edit this new unique video format that will also be very exciting for a very specific part of the user base. I don't know how big that user base really is. I guess we'll see whether more people use WebP or uh, the immersive video workflow, but this is like the cutting edge stuff that some people are really jumping on. That's super exciting. And I will be linking to other videos in the description or the comments um, as I see them, as more people look at this specific new feature. It is very cool. I don't have any of the gear that would make sense for me to work with that. But what I do have is the same edit page timeline that we all have. And if I drag and drop any video on here, I also now have the default keyboard shortcut of C. And if I put my mouse just over here and I press C, boom, my playhead jumps to my mouse. Interesting. And what's this? If I hold C and just scrub my mouse, that playhead follows my mouse. Keeping it rolling with another small feature that for a portion of the audience will be very, very exciting. This is functionality um, from other editors like Final Cut Pro that some people have really, really wanted for a long time. For skimming your timeline, this can be really nice. You don't have to come up and click and hold in this little bar up here. And if you open up your uh, keyboard customization and click C, you'll see that this is a new command called mouse pointer. So you can rebind this if you want to, but if you just hold that, you can skim through your footage. If you come up to this help and search for scrubbing, you will also have this audio scrubbing that if you have it enabled, and if you have audio on this track, it will play that audio like it is normally scrubbing. So whether you want that or not, you can toggle that on or not. And if you have multiple edit points and you have snapping on, it will snap to those points. So if you don't want that, you can always quick disable that snapping and scroll through smooth again. You can also pair this with an option like a selection follows playhead. You can also pair this with other keyboard shortcuts like here. I also have a uh, shortcut to split clips. So just as I'm going through, I can split these clips or I can trim them. I can do all sorts of stuff. I think this will definitely become the new default way I move around my timeline. It's feeling really good. Next, let's talk about keyframing updates. I've got the Resolve logo here. If I scale it down, slide it over to the edge, set a keyframe, come forward a bit and slide it over here. Then we can go ahead and open our keyframes panel, hop over to this keyframe curves option, and I will zoom out to see this entire curve and we'll see, wow, we have the, not really a curve yet, we'll make it a curve for this move. Now, when this was initially launched in DaVinci Resolve 20.1, there were still lots of problems with curves. The actual movement that was generated did not match the actual physical curve you saw. So if you added something like a generic ease, if you selected these keyframes and came into this option and set them to both ease in and ease out, this looks like a simple curve. But in the past version, it was way too extreme, way too fast in the middle, but now you'll see it is actually moving corresponding to these easing curves. If you really ramp one of them up or hey, both of them, then you know it will hold longer and then 
I know this was a pain point for a lot of people. Also addressed in 20.1 uh, is an issue if you have multiple keyframes. So now if I select multiple keyframes, it will handle easing, you know, more than two very well without like extra curves or like trying to like rebound. It was doing, it was doing some interesting stuff at launch for 20, but lots of that has been smoothed over. Additionally, you'll see this lighter gray area and then darker gray area. We now naturally have bounds for these animations. So you'll see, even though the clip ends here, the animation continues on. This can be super valuable, whether you need to trim a clip that already has existing animation or whether you need access to these easy controls. But you know, once it's sort of like off frame, the ability to see these handles, even if you drag these out, you will always see that little extra buffer space. Really nice. We're hopping back to that little dancer guy because we are going to hop into Fusion because now, also from DaVinci Resolve 20, uh, like we saw previously um, in Resolve 20, we got Magic Mask version two on the color page. And now we got Magic Mask version two on the Fusion page. So all I need to do is click a dot now, let it do its thing. I'm guessing this will only select his shirt by default. Let's see. Yep. And then just click for pants and maybe click for his head. Let's see if that gets him all of them. Nope, because we grabbed like his neck. A. Oh, I kind of missed his head, so I'll go back. Now I'll include his head. Yeah, and that even puts in his hands and his feet. So now it knows it's a person. And now this, we can track forward and backward. Let it do its thing. And we are getting this Magic Mask version 2. That's performing pretty well. It's, it's hitching up a little bit for me. This is also a 4K clip and I'm recording, so you know, not quite ideal circumstances, um, but it's coming through really clean. I am really excited to finally dive uh, more fully into Magic Mask version two now, now that it's in Fusion. Um, I think we should be able to do some really, really cool stuff, especially with Proto. I'm excited to show off some stuff. But a short while later, you have that beautifully masked uh, image in frame uh, in the Fusion page. Magic Mask V2 is missing some of those like refine and like paint clean up features. But you also have like additional additional masking controls native to the Fusion page to work around there. Um, and I think it's worth it to get this new feature at all. It's pretty slick. I'm excited to use it more. Now, very niche feature in the Fusion page, but for like my Fusion nerds, we are going to like this. So now I have merged this over a black background, and let's say I want to change this blend slider into just a checkbox to be on or off. Previously on this merge, you could right click and come to edit controls and then find that specific blend control and change it from a slider to a checkbox. But now on any control, you can right click and go to edit control and it will bring up the options for that specific control. So if I change this to checkbox, um, I make sure this stays on the merge page. I click OK. And then now we have this little checkbox down here for, hey, visibility, do you want it or not? For people who do lots of work in this edit controls menu, um, being able to jump to a, an individual control is really nice as well. Next is another cool feature that I am not in the best instance to show off, but I wanted to mention, and that has two new effects, a color tone diffuser and a split tone effect. These are color effects. Um, I'm very excited to see what people do with those. It seems, it seems really powerful. <laughs> These are more like stylistic effects. Uh, the color tone diffuser, yes, the color tone diffuser, uh, I believe like mimics some like colored lens filters. So if you're in more like cinematic land, this might really appeal to you. Again, I will also link videos that cover this feature in the description, don't miss those. Next is something I was super excited to see. I've talked before about the difference between the default text and the text plus effect, especially um, how they integrate with the different sort of like character level styling systems. The default text effect, you can select individual letters and change them individually. If you use the text plus effect, you need to like jump to an extra modifier. But now in the multi text node where you can add, you know, multiple different text fields, we have some of that same behavior. We have different options here for character level styling. If I make sure my fusion overlay is on and just select a few letters and then scale them up, it will only scale up those letters. And this applies to all the different options we hear if you want to change their color or add an outline or extra like softness. You got those options now on a per character level here on the edit page through the multi text node. So it's very easy to add multiple different kinds of text and then modify not only those different, you know, chunks of text that you can have in text boxes or any other way, but also individual letters here on the edit page. 
This allows you the power of this sort of like text plus or multi-text system while also uh, giving, you, giving you easy access to this character level styling. It's nice. Speaking of our little viewer here, if I come up to view guides, we can add a guide. We can have this be horizontal or vertical, but you can see this gives us a guide that we can then move across the screen. If I do bring something here like this resolve logo, and I try to transform this. You can see now I have snapping to this custom guide here in my viewer. And if I create multiple of these and drag them around, you'll see you can snap to multiple at a time. It did bound to the edge of this logo. If I have this text, it sort of bounces to the entire text box. Uh, but if I change this over to fusion overlay, what do we got? Will this bound? Oh, even it interacts with the fusion system. So even the text itself um, will snap to those guides. Ooh, that's that's actually really nice. I missed that at first, but that is super good to know. So you can have that text perfectly centered, interacting with different systems at once. That's really nice. I'll toggle those guides off for now and clean this up. Just get this logo back in center because we're going to show off another cool feature. In Fusion, you can use the Shift Space command to quickly search for new nodes to add to your node tree, but they have added that functionality to several different pages now. So if I select this image, press Shift Space, and if I search for something like my screen pump effect, it will automatically apply that to this will search your effects library and you can see it searched for effects because I had that selected. If I don't have that selected and I just search for something like Proto, you'll see that even brings up Proto V3 early access, which is a generator, not an effect. So if I click that, it will add it over anything else I have going on in my timeline. So especially if like me, you've got, you know, hundreds of third party uh, effects and generators living in your effects library. If you just want to quickly add one to a clip or quickly add one to your timeline, you can now just like shift space for that. It's slick. it's cool. You also have this option in Fairlight and I believe the color page too. They're, they're trying to put this where they can. And so far it's, it's also feeling great quickly zooming around your timeline, holding this uh, C keyboard shortcut and then shift space to search for uh, a generator or an effect. It just, it's just feeling good. And then next is an option for uh, anyone using this record voiceover option. New in file project settings under Fairlight, you will have use 32 bit float recording. This might depend a little on the specific interface you are working with. And of course, like you can always like overload like a specific mic, but what this allows you to do is to record in 32 bit float. If you don't know, this is kind of like shooting in raw for videos or photos. If you record audio in 32 bit float, the idea is like that file can't peak. Or if you accidentally record really low, uh, it's much easier to bring up all those volumes. It gives you a lot more leeway, a lot more data to work with. It's been rolled out in like different audio devices over the last couple of years. And now if you are recording natively right into Resolve, you can record in this much more like expanded format. Again, for the right audience, probably really nice. That's kind of like the theme of this update. Lots of small updates, um, but if you manage to be in multiple different categories where these updates feel like they're for you, this will be a crazy phenomenal update. There's always more small cool things that find their way into these updates. So if I find anything else, I will be sure to tell you. But like I said, this was my speed run of things I thought were cool and I thought a lot of you would think were cool too. Even if I couldn't in depth show off some of those color effects or of course this immersive video workflow that I'm guessing is very, very cool. That's just not super my world. But some of this stuff is my world like Proto V3 is also my world. Uh, all that info will be in the description, uh, but I just wanted to show you DaVinci Resolve 20.1. Update day is always exciting. I think it is. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.